This is the Steam Deck, Valve's very first attempt at making a handheld console. And to be honest, for their first attempt, this is quite an achievement. Not only did it launch with a huge chunk of Steam's library already being playable on day one, but it also stomped a whole new industry out of the ground with many competitors trying their hands on this handheld PC market. Even most of Valve's own games are now playable on the deck. Half-Life, Portal, Left 4 Dead, all of these series are fully accounted for and are now playable portably. But what is another big reason to get these games nowadays? That's right. Mods! There are a buttload of custom campaigns available for you to play right now, some of which you arguably cannot miss out on. So my question is, would you be able to play those mods on the Steam Deck as well? Do they install easily or do you have to jump through a bunch of hoops to get them to work properly? Join me in my journey to get answers to these questions. Random Let's get started at the very beginning, downloading and installing the mods. For this video, I'm mainly going to focus on Half-Life and Half-Life 2 mods, but I can imagine that installing Portal 1 mods works about the same way as installing Half-Life 2 mods, so it should work all the same. To get the first step done, I connected my Steam Deck onto a dock that had a monitor connected to it through HDMI, alongside a keyboard and a mouse. You don't really need to do this, but it makes the Linux desktop mode a lot nicer to use. And yeah, this first step does require you to use the Linux desktop. Now using Google Chrome, I went to ModDB to look for some mods I wanted to really play on this thing. For this video, I downloaded the Half-Life DK solo mission demo, Half-Life Echoes, Half-Life Field Intensity, and Half-Life Herbicide for the original Half-Life, and Cosmonaut, Racing the Bar Salvation, and Research and Development for Half-Life 2 and its episodes. Now I also downloaded Half-Life Caged, Minerva, and Entropy 02 straight from the Steam Store to see how they would work in contrast to the mods I downloaded and installed myself. It would be interesting to see if there are any differences here. It's definitely a little easier to install, I can tell you that much. Alright, now that I got these mods nicely gathered in these folders, it's time to install them. Now, what deal do I have to make and with which deity to make these mods work on this device running Linux? None! I actually just installed these mods like I would install any Half-Life or Half-Life 2 mod on Windows. So for the original Half-Life, I just dumped the folders inside of the archives into the Half-Life root directory and that should do it. For Half-Life 2, I made sure I got all the Source SDKs installed, and for SDK 2013, I made sure I got the beta set to upcoming. Then I dumped the folders inside the archives into the Source Mods folder, and Bob's my uncle. Actually, I don't have any uncles called Bob, but, you know. Oh, and make sure that you follow the install instructions included with the mods you download. Some might require you to do a little something extra. Oh, also, quick tip. To help you navigate to the Source Mods folder more easily, you can browse the local files of a game you got installed and then go back a few folders using the breadcrumbs at the top of the file explorer. And hey, there it is. Lastly, I restarted Steam and went back into GAME MODE. And then all the lovely mods showed up perfectly in the Installed tab. Mission complete, right? Well... Well... Let's run the mods! I started with a Half-Life mod first, the Half-Life DK Solo Mission Demo by Team Solo. Hmm... It, um, it seems to be stuck at launching executable. Not a good first impression here. Alright, well, let's cancel the launch here and... Wait, wait, what? Did the game just open when I cancelled launching it? I got a lot of questions, but... Anyway, here we are, I suppose. The DK Solo Mission demo running on the Steam Deck. Let's start a new game here. Hmm, okay, strange. Um, let's try again. Welp, okay, that didn't go well. As it turns out, you gotta do an extra step to get Half-Life mods to run properly. In the properties and under compatibility, I turned on the feature to force the original Half-Life to run under the Proton Experimental mode. 
You only have to do this with the original Half-Life game and not the mods that you play, as when they're installed in the Half-Life directory, they should all run under the Half-Life executable anyway. Now let's run the mod again. The DK Solo Mission demo seems to have gotten classy because the main menu now has the Serif typeface instead of the normal one. Jeepers. Alright, well, let's start a new game and see if it works now. <laughs> awesome, the game works. Now we can enjoy the DK Solo Mission demo on the... Uh... Go. Okay, why am I not moving? Yeah, as it turns out, the left joystick doesn't work for me for some reason. Weird, because it does work properly in the regular game. What's even weirder is that ducking by pressing down the left joystick does seem to work, so it's not like the game cannot register the left joystick at all. I tried a whole bunch of things to get it to work somehow. I tried switching to different control layouts through Steam Input, and it turns out that if I choose a layout that emulates the WASD keys onto the left joystick, it does work. So hey, there is that. But a problem with that is that now the movement is very binary meaning that you can only move at one speed instead of the gradual movement that the regular analog joystick mode would provide. But there was another problem. Steam wouldn't keep my preferred Steam input layout selected for some reason. Every time I select a different profile, it will always revert it back to the Half-Life official layout. Sometimes it would do this immediately after exiting the Steam menu, sometimes it does it after you get back into the Steam menu, and other times it will even change it back right before your very eyes. What the hell's going on? So yeah, selecting a different profile is absolutely ass and doesn't seem to work for me for some reason. While emulating the WASD keys onto the left joystick would make Half-Life mods playable, Steam input getting in the way here still makes this impossible for me. At this point, I just wanted to get the official layout to work again. So I asked some friends for help. I send a message in the Lambda Generation staff server, which we have. Magic Nipples figured out that there are some CVARs that might enable the joystick to work properly. Specifically, Joy Advanced, which needs to be set to 1. Then there are these 6 CVARs that need to be set up correctly. And afterwards, you need to make sure you got Joy Sensitivity set to 1 and not something like minus 1. And lastly, you need to execute the Joy Advanced Update CVAR to update the controller config file. Simple, right? But you won't really have to do all that manually because technically there is a CFG file inside of the Half-Life directory that gets executed that includes these console commands already. So after fiddling around with that for a bit... Yeah, um, still no dice. It's worth mentioning that it wasn't just the DK solo mission demo that had this issue. Pretty much all Half-Life mods that I downloaded had this problem. Except for Half-Life Caged because that mod runs standalone and is still based upon the pre-HL25 version of Half-Life. Steam input doesn't get in the way there for me to change the control layout and having it stick. After a bit, some more people within Lambda Gen that also had access to a Steam Deck tried out the same mods on their systems, and for some reason, they had none of the same issues that I had. As you can imagine, I was quite stumped at this point. After this, I completely reinstalled Half-Life several times onto my Steam Deck to see if that would fix it. And I made it download a fresh copy of the internet and not pulled from my PC, which it can apparently do. And it still just didn't work. I even disabled Steam Cloud Syncing to see if it might be bringing over some weird config file that was saved in the cloud, but yeah, still none of this worked. It's kind of hopeless. Uh, at this point, I decided to go back to the pre-HL25 update of the game, which actually does still work on the Steam Deck. As I just mentioned, Half-Life Caged also runs that version of the game. In this version of the game, I was able to select a layout that emulates the WASD keys on the left joystick without Steam input resetting the layout back to the official one for whatever reason. So yeah, the game is now fully playable. It might not be ideal, but I can absolutely see myself completing a full mod like this. Now, if anyone in the comments can help me figure out why my left joystick just completely refuses to work in standard joystick mode, then that would be amazing. Maybe one of you guys can figure it out. Also, keep in mind that these issues seem to be exclusive to me. You might have a much easier time getting Half-Life mods to work, even on the 25th anniversary update. Anyway, let's get into running source mods. Let's try out research and development here. And... Hmm could not load library client. 
Yep, we're already off to a good start. Anyway, the first thing I try to do is to just set the proton compatibility of the source SDK it uses to experimental again. That really does seem to be the Steam Deck's WD-40, huh? And just like that, the mod just launches. And yeah, it has the classy font again. Now, before I did anything, I made sure to select the keyboard, WASD, and mouse layout in Steam Input. Now, this is purely to get a trackpad mouse going that I can use to go through the menus here. Without it, the menus are incredibly clunky to get through. I also set the left joystick up to be an actual joystick this time. Yeah, no weird WASD emulation anymore. Just joystick goodness. Oh, and I also enabled the joystick in the mouse settings menu, otherwise it won't work. Getting started with the mod was as easy as just starting a new game. It loads up and works just fine. Except for the joystick, of course, of course. But to be honest, this really just seemed to be some kind of odd config issue. So I went into the game files of Half-Life 2 and found this 360controller.cfg file. I copied this file and put it into all of the CFG folders I could find in the source SDK 2013 install directory, and I booted research and development up again. I executed the CFG file inside of the console and... <gasps> oh my gosh! I fixed it! I actually fixed it! Yep, the movement controls work perfectly fine now. They're even fully analog. I knew it was just some strange configuration stuff. As you can imagine, I was very, very happy. <laughs> I definitely recommend putting this 360 controller.cfg file into the CFG folders of all of your installed source SDKs, just to make sure. Does the left joystick not work properly? Just execute the CFG file and bam, now it works like it should. I also tested my Nerva on the Steam Deck downloaded from the Steam Store, and that mod already had a 360 controller.cfg file that it loaded automatically. So that mod already works pretty well. At least, it did for me. And then there is Entropy 02, which is a unique case in and of itself. Because EZ2 has been made to work with the Steam Deck pretty much flawlessly. It even has the Steam Deck UI enabled on the system, it has its own controller layout already loaded for you, and it even has Steam Deck buttons in the game's tutorial prompts. Honestly, this was such a breath of fresh air after what I've just went through with all the other mods. So thank you to the entire Breadman team. You guys really cared about having this game be played portably. Also, yes, I do the voice for the radio guy in this mod. I get that question a lot. So here are some final things I want to tell you before you go wild yourself with installing these mods. It is pretty much essential to start fiddling around with the control layouts, because the default ones might not be entirely ideal for the mod that you're playing. So make sure you tweak the control layouts to something you find comfortable. Does the mod require you to press a button that isn't normally mapped on the Steam Deck? You can just map it yourself. The Steam Deck has plenty of buttons for that. Another thing is that mods are going to look a little bit boring in your library because they don't really have any cover art or banner art. Now you can easily just set up your own art in desktop mode to make these mods blend in a little bit more with the rest of your games. A site that I recommend for that is called steamgriddb.com. There are tons of custom covers, banners, logos, and more available for your favorite mods. So it's definitely worth a look. So yeah, to answer the question from the beginning of the video, it is absolutely possible to download, install, and play your favorite mods on the Steam Deck. It's just that Half-Life mods might give you a little bit of a headache to get working, and you do need a little bit of technical know-how to get the job done. But hey, you also bought a Steam Deck, right? So you might tolerate a little bit of tinkering. Anyway, that's it. That's been my journey to get mods working on the Steam Deck. Now, this is by no means a tutorial, and you know, you, you can follow some of these steps to get the mods working, but hey, you might encounter some other issues, you might encounter absolutely no issues at all. That's entirely possible. Like I said, this is just my journey trying to get all this stuff to work. So yeah, results may vary. Anyway, what do you think? Did I miss something? Or do you want to see me tinker around with the Steam Deck some more in a future video? Let me know in the comments. 
Also, let me know in the comments if you got any way for this left joystick to actually work in Half-Life because it still does kind of bother me that I didn't get that to work for this video. I really wanted to, but it just wasn't in the cards apparently, so... I'm sorry if that disappointed you a little bit. I'm certainly disappointed, so... All that being said, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do so by clicking the button down below, because then you'll be notified for when I upload more videos. Salutations, and take care. Lambda, Lambda, Lambda.